Hey guys, it's Michael here from Educates. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at creating our own bag tag in Tinkercad. So let's get started. Head to the Tinkercad website at tinkercad.com. The first step is going to be signing in. At the top right of the Tinkercad website, there's a button that says sign in. Click this if you've already got an account or click join now if you need to create one. This is the main screen of Tinkercad that you'll see once you've logged in to your account. So as you can see down here, there are lots of different designs that I've already created that I can hover over to see more about. But if, you're, if you've just got a new account, you're not gonna see any of this. Because we're creating a new design, let's head over to the button on the left that says create new design. It's gonna take just a few seconds to load. Once Tinkercad loads, you're gonna see this blank workspace. Now, here in the center, we've got what's known as the work plane. This is where we place different objects and this is where we're gonna be doing the editing. You can almost think of it as like a desk. So if we're writing something, you're gonna be putting your book down on the desk and that's where you're gonna be working. Well, it's like this, but with 3D objects. So when you want to um, make the bag tag, this is where it's going to be done. In the right, you can see all the different shapes that we can add to our work plane. If you scroll through that, you can see that there is quite a few to choose from. Up here in the shapes menu, we can drop down and see lots more to pick from. The first thing we're gonna do is edit the size of our work plane so that we have a rough idea of how large our bag tag is going to be. Hit this button over here that says edit grid. This is gonna change the size of our work plane. In the width, type in 80, and in the height, type in 30. Once you've done this, hit the button that says update grid. This should be on the bottom right of the modal that's just popped up. As you can see, the grid has now gotten a lot smaller and looks a little bit more like a bag tag. Now we're gonna zoom in to make this fill the screen a bit better. You can do that using the middle scroll wheel of your mouse or by using two fingers to zoom if you're on a trackpad. Now that our work plane is a little bit larger, let's go and add a cube to it if we scroll up back to the top and drag a box onto our work plane, this is what's going to be the base of our bag tag. But right now it doesn't really look like a base because it's a cube. So let's flatten it out a bit. This top handle on the cube is going to change its height. So if you hover over it, you can see that it gives a value in this case um, it, it gives us 20. Now this means that it is 20 millimeters high. Remember that 10 millimeters are a centimeter, so this is two centimeters high. Let's drag this down and change it to about four millimeters, so roughly half a centimeter. That looks about the right size. Now let's make it a little bit wider to fill this work plane a little bit better. Click on the left handle and drag it close to the edge. Now let's do the same thing for the right handle. Click on it and drag it to the other side. Now let's drag the bottom handle towards us a little bit and the back handle away from us a little bit as well. Perfect, now we've got a base for our bag tag. The next thing we're going to want to do is add some text. So this could be your name, this could be the name of a relative, whoever you're making the bag tag for. Let's go up here to where it says basic shapes and change it to text and numbers. As you can see in this right sidebar, you can choose from either this, this block that says text or you can choose from individual letters. So let's click and drag that from the right hand toolbox onto our work plane and the base for the bag tag that we've already created. Now you wanna position this in the center of the work plane. You can do that by clicking and dragging on the item. In this box on the right, you can see that it says text. This is where you're gonna to want to change what the text says. Let's click on that and change it to your name. My name's Michael, so that's what I'm gonna change it to. Perfect, now if you've got a name like mine, you're gonna notice that this text is spilling off the edge of our work plane. This means that it's not going to be printed um, if you're using the service that we've got going at Educates. 
It also means that because it's going off the edge of our bag tag base, it's not going to be attached to it. So that's not very good. Let's make it a little bit smaller. So first we need to zoom out so that we can see the full text. Remember to zoom in or out, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse or by using the normal scrolling action on your trackpad. Now we're gonna hover over one of the edge nodes on our text. Hold the shift key and drag that inwards towards the center of the work plane. This is going to make the text smaller but keep everything in proportion. That means it's not going to be stretched on one side. Now I've made mine just a little bit smaller so that it's gonna fit better on the bag tag now. Let's click and drag that text right in there to reposition it properly. Now you can click off onto the background to deselect this. Perfect, so this is looking a little bit more like a bag tag. If you wanna see what you've just created, maybe from a different angle, here's a little trick. If you right click and drag on the background, you're gonna be able to orbit around the object that you've just created. So this is gonna allow me to see it from all different angles and to get an idea of what I've just created. This is really cool. The last thing about a bag tag is gonna be a hole because we need something to put the key ring through. I usually put the hole on the top left of my bag tag, but you can put it wherever, it, wherever you want. Firstly, let's go and select this whole bag tag and move it over so that we can have a little more room. We can do that by left clicking and selecting everything by drawing a little box around it. You can see the box with the dotted red lines. That's gonna select everything. You can then use your arrow keys left and right, up and down to move this whichever way you want. As you can see, we've got a little bit more room on the top left of our bag tag to add this ring. So in our toolbar to the right, let's change our selection back to basic shapes so that we can get a cylinder to make the whole width. Click and drag that onto the work plane. Again, this cylinder's a little bit too big. So let's click on one of the nodes on the corners, hold shift and drag it towards the center of the object to make it smaller. I'm gonna orbit so that I can make sure that the top of the cylinder is the same height as the top of our bag tag base. So they line up really nicely. Remember, you can change the height by clicking on the node at the top of the cylinder and dragging it downwards. Fantastic. Now they're the same height, we've just gotta put a hole inside that cylinder. Let's go and drag on this cylinder that's got black and white stripes across it. Black and white stripes in Tinkercad means that something is a hole. This means that when we group it with other objects, it's going to take away from that object, a little bit like a drill in this case. We're going to resize again using shift and by dragging one of those corners inwards. This time, we're gonna use the measurements on the side that are coming up to help us make this the right size. You want the cylinder to be about three millimeters by three millimeters. As you can see, this is a little bit short for height. So this time, rather than making it smaller, we're gonna to have to make the height a little bit taller. Use the top node for this. We're gonna be dragging this cylinder into the center of the other one. You can get the top view uh, by clicking this button here, and that's gonna give us the best view so that we can get this cylinder in the right position. We're also gonna click this switch to orthographic view button, which is gonna remove the perspective from our design and make things easier to position. So click on this cylinder, and this time I'm gonna use the arrow keys rather than dragging, because this is gonna give me a more accurate positioning. So as you can see right now, we've got this tiny little problem where the cylinder is not gonna go exactly in the center, no matter what I do with my arrow keys. If you look down here, you can see this option that says snap grid and it's set to one millimeter right now. What this means is that every time we press an arrow key, it's only gonna move in that direction by one millimeter. We want this to be 0.5 of a millimeter because that's gonna get the cylinder right in the center. Let's click on that and change it right now. As you can see, now it's right in the center just as we like it. Let's just quickly switch back to perspective view and see what's happened. So you might be thinking right now, well, we need to change the height of that hole so it matches everything else. Well, actually, holes only take away from other things. So it doesn't matter if they're a little bit taller because there's nothing else that it's affecting. Let's actually make this hole a real hole. So remember how we selected everything else by drawing a little box around it with our left click? Let's do that again with everything. You'll see an option up here 
in the top toolbar that says Group. So you can click on this option or press Command-G, well, Control-G if you're on Windows, and it'll take a few seconds to load, but you'll soon see that this bag tag has now got a hole through it, and this is gonna allow you to put a key ring through your keychain. At Edukits, we've just started a service which allows you to print off some of the designs that you've created through our videos through our website, and we'll mail it to you once it's finished. Head to edugits.co or click the link in the description of this video to learn more about our 3D printing services. I hope you learned something from this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments or through the contact form on the Edukits website. We'll be coming to you with more videos and more projects. Thank you.